Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Saturday in the octave of Easter. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had risen early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told his companions, who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that he was alive and that he had been seen by her, they did not believe. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them walking along on their way in the country, or to the country. They returned and told the others, but they did not believe them either. Later, as the eleven were at table, he appeared to them and rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who had saw him after he had been raised. He said to them, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you know, we're still in the octave of Easter, these eight days where basically we are in Easter. It is Easter Day each day, so it's like an eight-day long, one-day celebration. In fact, in the preface for Mass, uh, we actually say, on this day. And it's it's like Christmas, where uh, the Nativity of our Lord is celebrated for more than just one day, and it is the same here with Easter, the day of resurrection, that we give eight days specifically to reflecting upon this amazing, momentous event. And today, we are looking at it through the eyes of Mark's gospel. And uh, as you probably have heard from my, from me and from others, Mark's gospel is particularly the gospel of Peter. Mark was uh, Peter's assistant, and this was basically Peter's view of what was going on. And so we hear in, uh, in this particular version several little pieces that we find in the other Gospels as well. We have Mary Magdalene at the tomb. We have the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. We have uh, the Great Commission from Matthew. So these are all present in uh, what many believe is the earliest of the Gospels, that Mark was probably the first one written, and then Matthew kind of enlarged and uh, made even bigger uh, a lot of the things that were in Matthew's gos- or Mark's gospel. Mark always is very succinct, very uh, uh, narrowed in, in what, what he references, and you move from event to event, place to place fairly quickly. So here, I think the thing that, uh, that I see that uh, is, again, a part of not only Mark's gospel, but a part of that first resurrection day, that first Easter, is the fact that there was a lot of doubt as to what really had happened. That there, among those that were in the upper room, which is what they did, they went back to the upper room and there they waited together. That um, as the it talks here in Mark's gospel about the 11, and so particularly talking about those um, apostles that were named by Jesus with the exception of Judas, who, of course, is by this time out of the picture. So we have here um, a lot of doubt on the part of those who had followed Jesus based on uh, the reports that they'd heard, first from Mary Magdalene. This was after she had returned with Peter and John to the tomb, and it was at that point that she uh, basically uh, saw the Lord. So she again reported that to them. Also, you may remember that the, the two on the road to Emmaus, when they got to Emmaus, they had an opportunity to uh, basically encounter Jesus and recognize who he really was in the breaking of bread. And at that point, then they rushed back to Jerusalem and again reported what they were finding, that again, the, the, uh, the fact that Jesus rose from the dead was true. They had seen him. And it was here as they were at, uh, at the table together, that uh, Jesus again appeared to them. He was there, and, and as you may remember from other accounts of that, he said that they could touch him. He said that, uh, they, that he needed something to eat. He also told them things that he had said 
uh, before the resurrection, before the crucifixion, so that they would not think that he was actually somebody that looked like Jesus but wasn't the same person. But here, he really, um, Mark uh, emphasizes the fact that um, he challenged them for their, their hardness of heart, that they, you know, after walking with him for so long and even being prepared by things he wanted to, to impart to them prior to his uh, passion, death, and resurrection, he told them that he was going to die. He told them on the third day that he would be raised, but they really didn't believe what he was trying to say to them. And so he really challenged them at that point. And, um, but then, as he continues to minister out of his heart uh, to them at that point, he gives them, again, the Great Commission. And this is, of course, the one that Matthew really um, strengthens with more of what Jesus said at that time. And here, again, we hear uh, Mark reflecting upon Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. What a powerful commission that they were to now take this message. And again, that's got to scare them a little bit. I mean, it, they've just received this uh, startling uh, uh, report and then the startling event of Jesus actually appearing with them and now he's going to send them on a mission. So again, this is a challenging time for them that, uh, that they would really be able to embrace all that Jesus was telling them. And of course, the beautiful thing about what we're talking about here <clears throat> is realizing that Jesus walked with them not for just that one Sunday, but was with them for 40 days prior to his ascension. And so he was able to more fully uh, strengthen and support what he said that first day about their need to go into the world and their need to be witnesses and their need to tell every creature, every person about this glorious gospel. And of course, then he even challenged them at the point of his ascension, wait, wait, and again, on Pentecost, they received the strengthening they, they, the strengthening they needed in order to do, do the work that Jesus had already called them to do. So here we are. Uh, we are on day seven of the eighth day. Tomorrow, of course, is uh, the uh, octave, the eighth day, but it's also Divine Mercy Sunday and some wonderful, wonderful perspective on how that fits beautifully into the octave of Easter. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, the Lord willing, we will be together again tomorrow for day by day. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.